Hello race fans, welcome back to the channel. It is Jake Sanderson, AKA Snowman Cycling, and I'm back once again. This time, we've got something different. We're not doing a race analysis, recap, tactics, tips, techniques. Instead, I've been off the bike over Christmas, enjoying my well-earned time off, and we did a vote on the channel about what content you guys want to see in 2023. We had a tie for first place, and one of those joint winners was a ramp test. We said it before, you guys don't like to see me do well on this channel, you like to see me suffer. So that's what you're gonna get today. We're gonna be really interested to find out how many watts I lost over Christmas when I was off the bike. Really interested to find out Exert, which is what I use to track my training, thinks I lost about 20, 30 watts. So it'll be interesting to see if that tallies. Okay, here we go, let's do this. Okay, first one down, something tells me not all gonna be that easy. When we did that vote in the comments, one of the subs, Michael Bass asked if I could wear a heart rate monitor so you could see exactly how badly I'm suffering. So Michael, this one's for you, bud. Hope you enjoy the suffering. My max heart rate's about 188. I don't think we'll get near that today after that much time off the bike. I'm currently 62 kilos, smidge over, 62.2, something like that. Okay, people, this is the part of the video where I'm gonna to have to hand it over to my digital self to carry on the narration because physical me is not gonna be able to do the ramp test and narrate it at the same time. And as you can see, nothing says taking this ramp test more seriously than drinking a cup of tea whilst riding a buffalo bike. Now we know we're taking this deadly seriously, there's a couple of other things just to mention to give you some context. So I just said I'm about 62 kilos at this point. I'm 170 centimeters, about five foot seven. So this one's not gonna go on too long. There's no danger of me doing the 560 watt interval. It's much more likely we're gonna be in the three, 320, possibly even 340 range. And whilst we're skipping through this one for some more context, in terms of my numbers, my FTP during November, when I was at my peak, did my best 20 minutes all year, was at about 260 watts. That's about 4.2 watt per kilo FTP for the hour. My 20 minute value is a bit higher, 275 watts, about 4.4 for 20 minutes. So obviously, as we know, your FTP is calculated as 95% of your best 20 minute effort. In reality, in December, I was probably closer to about 250, so 10 sort of watts less than my peak in November. And then I took three weeks totally off the bike over Christmas to reset, recover, recharge. That's what the pros do. I said it in the last video. Saw a really interesting video on GCN where all the different pros were talking about the different times they take off the bike at the end of the season. They don't race 52 weeks a year, all year round. This year, I decided to do the same thing after having had my previous breakthroughs come off the back of weeks off the bike. So I wanted to try and see if I could take a couple of weeks off this Christmas and come back and break through and hit some PRs that we've never done before. So that's what we're gonna try and do at the start of this year. But first, as you can see, we've got a long way to go. Definitely dropped quite a lot of watts in that three weeks off over Christmas. But the question on everybody's lips when you get to Christmas is how many watts am I going to lose? How devastating is it to take a week or two off the bike, chill with family and not have to worry about training? Well, don't worry, because we're definitely gonna find that out by the end of this video. In addition to that, I also caught a bit of illness from said family at Christmas. One of the disadvantages of having to catch up with people at Christmas is you invariably get their germs and that can take you back a little bit on the training. So initially I only wanted to take two weeks off the bike, but unfortunately I had to take a little bit longer because I just wasn't feeling very well. When we did this test, I definitely wasn't feeling 100% either. So there's still some remnants of that illness hanging over here. And I don't know about you guys, but the first ride back I do after a break always sucks. Absolutely sucks. Doesn't matter if it's a social ride, training, race, intervals, whatever. It just hurts. I always suffer really badly. I'm always really out of breath, find it difficult to turn the pedals. But that usually just lasts for the first ride back. I always think of it like when you're off the bike, taking a break, you've gotten out of the water, you've gotten dry, you've gotten warm, you've gotten comfortable. And this is literally just a situation of as soon as you're back training, you've got to jump back into that cold water, get wet, get cold. But as soon as you are, you're fine and everything's back to normal. And this is the point where it's really starting to hurt. I can feel my cadence is going down a little bit, so I'm having to try and work to keep it up. My heart rate is getting higher and higher. I definitely don't think we're gonna see that mid 180s max heart rate today. I'm already feeling pretty bad at this point. My legs are hurting, the lungs are hurting. Once or twice, I made the mistake literally of trying to blow my nose or change my song on my phone and it meant that that cadence in erg mode, the spiral of death got on top of me and I had to work to bring it back up. So rookie mistake there. Haven't done that ramp test for about three years and I've forgotten just how nasty that erg spiral of death is. You let your focus drift for just a second. 
Personally, I'm really not a fan of erg mode for training. It's just such a weird thing. It's You're never going to have anything hold the power for you out on the road in a race. So it's a really odd thing to train like that. In real situations, you're going to have to hold the cadence yourself. You'll have to change gear. It's just quite an unnatural way of doing it. So my coach, my British cycling accredited coach feels similarly. Neither of us use erg for our intervals. Tell me in the comments, do you like erg? Do you use it? Do you think it's beneficial? Does it help you get stronger? Or are you like me? Do you prefer to do your intervals with erg mode off and hold that power and cadence yourself? Maybe for the next one, we'll try doing that. I'll do the ramp test without erg mode on and see if that makes any difference. And we're hitting the end game now. I know this is pretty near the end. My heart rate's not really as high as I wanted it to be, but that's probably due to illness and like I say, the time off the bike. So that will come back up again pretty quickly to the mid 180s range, I think. So I'm just clinging on here, trying to squeeze out every last little bit of what I can. So I know that I'm really at the limit and we get an accurate indication of my true level. But there it is. I give up the ghost, throw in the towel. I've had enough. Don't have any more left in the tank today. It, it would have been nice to get a little bit more power out if I could, maybe hang on for another 10 watts, but you can only do what you can do, and that was all we had in the tank today. That those numbers are pretty much in line with what we were expecting, what the experts said, what excerpts said. I lost about 10% of my power, so probably between 20 and 30 watts. Let's call it 25 watts. Pretty much bang on that 10% mark after three weeks off the bike. Well, there you go, guys. <laughs> Quite a lot less than it was. Remember, that FTP is what it thinks you can hold for an hour. So it's 230 watts at 62 kg. That's 3.7. So over the next few weeks, it'd be really interesting to see how quickly that power comes back. But way off A power, as you can see, so it's going to be tough jumping straight back into the races. And this is where I'm going to jump back in on the edit to let you know I did do a TTT team time trial two days after this and the power was significantly higher already. So I did about, I think it was just over 4.0 for 20 minutes with a normalised power of about 4.1 or so for 35 minutes on the London Box Hill route. So that power is going to come back and it's going to come back pretty quickly. I'm hoping in about six weeks I'll be back at the level I was at and even stronger. However, in the interim, when I looked at Zwift Power, I can see I'm still an A in Zwift Power for another month or so. However, in category enforcement, I am now back down to the B level with the B boys. So hopefully I can jump into a couple of category enforcement B races to get a bit sharper and then we'll jump straight back into the A races and try and do a bit more A racing. So coming up on the channel in the next few weeks, we've got a Zwift YouTuber Battle Royale Challenge series featuring some of your favorite Zwifting YouTubers. We've got a couple of ideas in the tank, so we're going to be really excited to get those sorted and bring those to you. And we'll try another one of these in six weeks, two months, see what we're looking like. Can't say that was the way I wanted to get back on the bike, but YouTube asked, YouTube gets. And remember, race fast, ride hard, and that you are appreciated.